Hello everyone, I am the Man Editor Kirby, and welcome to my channel, The Commander Tavern. The Commander Tavern is a channel dedicated to my favorite Magic the Gathering format. The Brewery is a series on this channel showcasing my spicy brews and other deck texts. On this episode of The Brewery, I'll be discussing my take on a commander recently spoiled from Dominaria United, Ramirez de Pietro, Pillager. If you like this deck or any of the cards I'll be mentioning throughout the video, please consider using my TCG Player affiliate link when purchasing those cards. You can find that link down in the description, it'll really help out the channel. The best way you can help support the channel is on Patreon. For just $1, patrons get early access to certain videos on YouTube. You can also support my channel for free by simply liking, subscribing, and sharing, which also helps out a lot. I put out a video every Monday, so you don't want to miss out. You can join my Discord server for free if you want to join the Commander Tavern community. All pertinent links are down in the description. Alright, let's get back to the episode. Ramirez is a 4-3 human pirate for 2 generic, 1 blue and 1 black. He has an enter the battlefield ability that gives you 2 treasure tokens at the cost of 2 life. Not only is this important to help synergize with the second ability, but I'm going to make the absolute most of this ability, which you'll see further along in the video. His second ability is another triggered ability that occurs whenever one or more pirates you control deal combat damage to a player. That player exiles the top card of their library and you may play that card as long as it remains exiled. Unfortunately, you still have to pay mana for it and thus in the appropriate colors, which treasure production can help with. However, the deck has plenty of ways to deal with that drawback, as well as being able to get those pirates dealing combat damage all along the table. First, let me go over how you can potentially win with Marie Mrs. first ability alone. Since he creates two treasure tokens when entering the battlefield, that's enough to pay for Deadeye Navigator's ability. While this won't generate infinite mana, it does produce infinite enter the battlefield and leaves the battlefield triggers for Marie Mrs. The downside? We're losing two life each time. Not to worry, so long as we kill the table before that happens, we'll be fine. How do we achieve that? with Platinum Angel and Platinum Imperion. The Angel prevents us from outright losing altogether, while the Imperion prevents us from losing life, meaning that we can blink Ramirez indefinitely many times without having to worry about losing to zero life. Granted, an opponent can destroy these in response, but we're half blue, so we have interaction of our own, which we'll see near the end of the video. As for capitalizing on this infinity, we can within the game thanks to Villa the Night clad, Ayara First of Lock Twain, and Forerunner of the Coalition. With Villa, each time Ramirez leaves the battlefield, each opponent loses one life. With Ayara and the 4-1er, the table loses one life each time Ramirez enters the battlefield. As a bonus, Ayara also gains us one life. These cards are also great outside of the combo, since Villa gives our creatures a form of evasion, which is great for the saboteur effects of the deck. Ayara can draw his cards, and the 4-1er can tutor for a pirate, of which there are plenty in the deck. As for some of those saboteur effects, Ramirez has one available from the get-go in the command zone, which is the thievery one. For that, we need to be able to hit our opponents. So how about running pirates with evasive effects? Changeling Outcast, Cloud Pirates, Siren Storm Tamer, and Spectral Sailor are the one-drop pirates with set abilities. With these having flying or outright unblockability, there's bound to be opponents we can hit. However, most of these evasive pirates are mostly two drops with the deck running Skyship Plunderer, Stormfleet Aerialist, Talos Explorer, Talos Scout, Warkite Marauder, Daring Saboteur, Departed Deckhand, and Kite Sail Corsair. These aren't really nothing to write home about. We don't mind running small evasive creatures in the deck in plentiful amounts like these because we are aiming to steal our opponent's best things to begin with. These also present no real threat to the table, so removal will most likely be spent on what we be stealing. Slippery Scoundrel and Talos Warrior are the final evasive pirates, these being the only three drops in this category. These are outright unblockable which is why they're in here, given that they are a bit costly for the aggro the deck wants to try and achieve. That being said, Swen Chuan, Lord of Wu, and Archetype of Imagination have the potential of making our entire board unblockable. With Sun Chuan, they'd need horsemanship to block our creatures, while the Archetype does the same except for creatures with reach, both abilities being relatively rare in commander games. But for all effects and purposes, we'll be getting through with our pirates. Cover of Darkness can also help if we choose Pirate as the creature type, giving our pirates fear. Granted, it's not as effective as the first two, but if no one else is playing black, we're practically golden. As for further making the most of Ramirez's ability, the deck's running Spark Double, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, and Sakashima the Imposter to literally multiply his effect. Having multiple copies means being able to exile more cards at a time, and they're still good for carping our opponent's best creatures anyways, which is still on theme. Tasha the Witch Queen is a card that is absolutely crazy in this deck, and best synergizes so perfectly with Ramirez. Each time we cast one of those cards he exiled, Tasha gives us a 3-3 demon token, which is nothing to scoff at, and all for free. Not only that, but Tasha herself allows us to seal cards. Her plus one has us draw a card and then exile an instant or sorcery from a graveyard with a page counter on it. Then her minus three has us cast any card with a page counter on it from exile. Super good here. 
Chromatic Lantern and Mystic Skull help bypass that problem of having to actually cast spells we're exiling because they let our lands tap for any color mana. Well, when Mystic Skull transforms into Mystic Monstrosity at least. This way we'll always have the colors needed for 3v without relying on treasures. Maskwood Nexus and Arcane Adaptation help with making all the deck's creatures be pirates to further make the most out of not just Ramirez but all the other lord effects in the deck. The deck doesn't have many non-pirate creatures, but Arcane Adaptation does help Forerunner of the Coalition tutor for any creature in the deck. Naturally, a tribal deck isn't as efficient as it could be without its lords and generic tribal boons. Malcolm Key Knight, Navigator, and Grim Hireling are great at procuring treasures through combat damage. You do have to spread the love around to make the most of these saboteur effects because it's essentially once per opponent hit. The good thing about Grim Hireling is that you get two treasure tokens. You can also weaponize those treasures into spot removal. Malcolm being a flying pirate is also a great bonus. Fathom Fleet Captain and Reflections of the Jara are great ways of multiplying our pirates. The tokens you can create with it also have Menace which is some form of evasion, albeit not the best kind. The enchantment is absolutely crazy here since we can copy our pirates for free when we cast them. Merchant Raiders synergizes well with these effects since it taps down creatures indefinitely. This is great for clearing the way for any attacking pirates. It's also a good bonus piece in the Ramirez Blinking Engine since you can also tap down the whole board indefinitely for an Alpha Strike. Vanquisher's Banner and Kindred's Discovery affects pirates that if the creature type you chose for them. These two permanents are so great at drawing cards, the enchantment in particular. Each time we attack with a pirate or have a pirate enter the battlefield we draw a card. And it's not the only card advantage tied to combat either. Biden of Thassa, Coastal Piracy, and Reconnaissance Mission are included because of how low the deck's curve is in terms of pirates with effective evasion. This deck draws into a ton of cards. So much so that you'll be hard pressed choosing between the spells in your hand or the cards you're exiling with Remy Mares. Worry not though, the deck is running Pull From Tomorrow, Blue Sun Zenith, Commander's Insight, Diviner's Pretent, Drawn in Dreams, Even the Score, and Stroke of Genius, which is the generic non-synergistic draw effects. We won't always be able to attack into everyone, but at least these really help us dig through our library for the combo win, just in case. Finally, the deck draws into so many cards that Thought Vessel, Decanter of Endless Water, and Reliquary Tower are included for good measure. Last thing we need is having to discard away any key pirates or interaction we want to keep in our hand. Plus, non-green decks need mana acceleration any way it can get it. Speaking of, the following cards in the deck are the essential responses and mana acceleration of any deck. Amphid Mutineer is an excellent removal piece considering that it's also a pirate. Blinking this whenever we need to exile a creature is quite the headache for our opponents. That being said, casting Kindred Dominance and overloading Cyclonic Rift will always get the job done. These are pretty much one-sided board wipes since pirate isn't that common a creature type. As for taking care of our opponent's own interaction, an offer you can't refuse, negate, mana drain, and counterspell have proven to be a good enough counterspell suite for the deck. I excluded Swan Song because we don't want our opponents blocking our flyers. You can also swap these out for zero costed counter spells if you want, but most of the things we want to avoid are void wipes after all. Cavern of Souls is great for protecting against others counter spells, but not entirely necessary if you don't already have it, won't proxy it, or can't afford it. The deck just works fine just without it. As for mana acceleration, Pitiless Plunderer is another bonus pirate since this card is so good on its own, regardless if it had a relevant creature type or not. While we're not sacrificing our pirates anytime soon, the deck is quite aggro, so at least whenever we lose any creatures in combat, we can get treasures for our troubles. Wayfarer's Bauble, Navigation Orb, Burnish Heart, Sword of Hearth and Home, and Sword of the Animus are the deck's land-based mana acceleration pieces. While the first three are one-time use only effects, the swords are amazing because they're repeatable and are also supported by the aggressive nature of the deck. If the equipped creature can't be blocked, you're guaranteed those basics. As a bonus, Sword of Hearth and Home can also blink a creature which is amazing synergy with Ramirez and Amphimunineer. Soul Ring and Arcane Signet are the deck's remaining two mana rocks. Fortunately, there's plenty basic land ramp effects in the deck so we're not too susceptible to mass artifact hate. So the 5 mana rocks in the deck along with the basic land ramp effects are good enough for the deck's colors. The rest of the deck is just the rest of the lands. The deck's running all 7 fetch lands, watery grave, sunken hollow, feeded pools, ice tunnel, drowned catacomb, sunken ruins, city of brass, mana confluence, command tower, and ancient tomb, as well as 7 of each basic land due to all of the land based ramp effect effects in the deck. As with all of my deck techs, you can build your mana base according to your budget, whether you include more expensive cards or even cheaper cards is up to you. You do you. This proves just an idea of how to build around Ramirez de Pietro Pillager. Even though he's another pirate lord, his effects allows at least for some combo potential if you want to think outside of the box. Granted, while I included that avenue to victory in the deck, this build aims to make the most of the pirates to steal as many cards as possible from opponents. 
is not using pirates as a means to wipe the board, but to play better cards from others. This means that there is also the potential of a more aggressive approach by including more tribal effects that increase power and toughness plus other boons. So mine has a little bit of everything in terms of combo, thievery, and pirate tribal. But you can build it more heavily leaning to whichever of these types of archetypes you want depending on your preference. If you're interested in the decklist of the spicy brew of mine, you can find a link to it down in the description. I would like to thank all my patrons for supporting me and a quick shout out to all my higher tier patrons, the brewers, for their patronage. I'd also like to thank anyone using my TCG Player affiliate link. That also helps out the channel. And to everyone, thanks for watching this episode of The Brewery on the Commander Tavern. I am the Manager Kirby, and happy brewing!